New York was the second largest slave owning state in the nation. The second largest. South Carolina was the first. I thought once you came north, you were free, but we were not free. And there's no museums. My name is Joy Maria Chattel. I live at 227 Duffield Street. Um, I'm part of the Duffield Street 7, which is the Underground Railroad. We found the tunnels, we took them downstairs, and we showed them the entrance to the tunnels from uh, a house, 223 Duffield Street. I'm an elder at the Prospect Park African uh, Drummers and Dancers Association. And um, one of the elders came over here to this place and he said to me, sister, do you know where you are? And I looked at him, um, I, what, I think so, I, I'm in my house. And he says, no, you're on holy ground. Our people went through here. This is part of the Underground Railroad. Before 1840, it was just the American Anti-Slavery Society that was run by Garrison. By 1840, Lewis Tappan, who was a Brooklynite, split with Garrison and he organized the uh, American uh, and Foreign Anti-Slavery Society. Tappan is helped by Henry Ward Beecher, the founding of Plymouth Church. That part gets into the literature. The other part does not. My husband told me about the Underground Railroad. He told me about his late wife's family and what he was told about the people that lived here. He says, yeah, there's a room downstairs and there was an opening between all the buildings. There's been a lot of back and forth about whether there were connections between these houses underground. The 1855 Paris map clearly shows that there were such connections. Henry C. Bowen, who was Tappan's son-in-law, founded what's called, now called Bridge Street Church. We now know that there are uh, tunnels and passageways in that church. What is that relationship between Bridge Street Church and Duffield Street? Well, it's only a block away. Harriet Lee Truesdale was a fighting woman. Every abolitionist lived in fear. Harriet Truesdale, the owner of this house, and her friend Julia Tappan were both delegates to the American Women's Anti-Slavery Convention, the National Convention in Philadelphia in 1838. She was the treasurer. Then she became the secretary. The woman almost lost her life in Pennsylvania at a convention for abolition and, and uh, um, for the women's abolitionist movement. They burnt that building down and that woman was in there, the Harriet Lee Truesdale. I would not know about this house if people in the African-American community had not had an oral tradition and got up and yelled about it. I wouldn't know that Harriet Drew still lived here. Blacks aren't entitled to a museum. We're not entitled to anything to commemorate such a horrible thing that happened to us. We can't have anything, especially when the city knows that the abolitionists lived here. This is not an issue of black history. This is an issue, issue of American history. And that all of us, all of us should raise our voices, preserve our history, preserve our legacy, and by all means, uh, give honor and due respect and regard to those people who gave their own lives in order to save others. For some reason, Underground Railroad Forging Freedom Trail information has been omitted. There's a need for African Americans to be able to have a monument to this terrible time in their history. I would see having institutions of learning that could teach everybody about it. I don't understand why we can't have a little piece of history when everybody else has so much. We need to keep our legacy alive. Yes. 